Well, let's explore the idea of space tourism further with Tariq Malik. He's an astro journalist and the managing editor of Space.com. Welcome to the show. Rochelle, thank you for having us. So give us an idea. How do you see space tourism changing the travel market? You know, it, space tourism has been uh, long awaited in, in for space fans everywhere. You know, ever since 2004, when the first private spacecraft, that's Spaceship One, uh, uh, financed by uh, Paul Allen and, and built uh, in, in Southern California, made its historic uh, several flights, actually, uh, the the stage was, was really set. And that's been over a decade since then, so we've been waiting for a long time. But as you just heard, uh, Virgin Galactic has already begun flying trips to uh, suborbital space. Um, they're poised to really kickstart this industry uh, uh, on, a, on a wider scale. So how do you even begin to regulate space travel, especially since you have these private firms from all over the world wanting a piece of the action? You know, it, it's really been kind of ad hoc up until now. Uh, several space tourists have flown to the International Space Station for tens of million dollars per flight. And that's kind of the, the only baseline that we've had up until this point. Uh, those missions to the International Space Station have been brokered uh, through Russia's space agency uh, and the U.S. company Space Adventures. And they were really like a one-off type of thing where they found a, a multi-millionaire customer uh, who went through medical checks uh, and, and space flight training, uh, like Anusha Ansari and, and others, uh, and then had you know, 10, 10 or, or, or 12 days in space. These new uh, uh, space light participants or, or space tourists, you know, the, the goal of making an industry is that they won't have to have uh, all of that background, that they'll be able to maybe one day buy a ticket uh, like we buy airplanes, uh, air, airplane flights, uh, and, you know, jump, jump on board with, with little training at all. You know, depending on, on what these flights are going to entail, right. they they're might need a, a new kind of uh, commercial space training uh, that people might have to go through for that kind of thing. And, and to that point, obviously we know astronauts spend months preparing themselves, not just mentally, but physically as well. Do we know what sort of training is, is necessary or is going to be required for tourists? Well, you know, th there were some, some hints earlier on when Virgin Galactic really began to spin up their, uh, their astronaut experience program. Uh, there were hints that there might be uh, several days of, of training uh, going through centrifuge type of, 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 uh, of rehearsals to kind of feel what that launch might be like. Um, and some, some standard uh, medical checks, uh, you know, Virgin Galactic to cater to a wide variety wants the biggest uh, customer pool that they can get uh, within, within reason. And uh, there are other experience companies like Zero Gravity Corp in the U.S., which offers uh, weightless flights uh, in in space or on a, 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 an airplane, and they've actually flown Stephen Hawking, you know, who who uh, had ALS and and ha had his own medical challenges, uh, and yet uh, they were able to fly him on a weightless flight. So there is quite a range available of experiences that these companies are trying to cater to, uh, as long as they kind of outline what those parameters are going to be uh, and what their customers may need. Now, Tariq, I do want to get to this issue of over-tourism. We've seen that here on Earth, a lot of these hot spots like Barcelona and Venice, we've seen a lot of the environmental damage that people do when they come and visit a place and treat it carelessly. Is there any danger of having too many tourists in space, you know, knocking over satellites or, or delicate space equipment? You know, we're not quite there yet, Rochelle, but, you know, the, the idea of, of what space tourists are going to do in space how many get to fly, that's going to be a, a big question going forward. You know, we know that there's at least 600 people that have been waiting for years to fly just on Virgin Galactic alone. Many people have registered with uh, Blue Origin their interest to buy tickets once they're on sale. And the line to fly to the International Space Station, uh, while we don't know kind of how many people have, have expressed interest, we know that those seats are very, very coveted. Russia just announced that they've inked a deal with Space Adventures to fly two space tourists in 2021 together. And that'll mean that, you know, that's, that's two people on the space station that aren't scientists, that aren't uh, professional astronauts, um, that, uh, you know, could encroach on other activities that might, might be done by a professional astronaut. So that kind of thing is, is where you might see this kind of impact, uh, uh, at least on the International Space Station. There's not enough spacecraft, not enough flights to the point where it's going to pose a danger yet. But uh, if this really does take off, if there are fleets of these ships flying all the time, um, you know, that it's, it's inevitable that, that some people are going to start to complain. All right. Well, thank you for your insights. Tariq Malik there, an astro journalist and the managing editor of Space.com.